Hi, it's Adam from iVirtual Mission. Uh, in this video, we're going to show you uh, the admin tabs and the platform tabs for this race host mission that we set up earlier. So if we click onto the admin tab, uh, the first one we'll look at is raw data export. So this allows you to um, select a date range um, and then download the data logs for the mission. This will show everyone's distances, um, the date they did those distances, um, the time, um, the type of activity it was, um, and also the email address for um, the person, name and email address for the person whose distance it was. This is useful for you uh, customized reports or um, doing a, say, prize draw raffle or something like that. Um, then we have this area here called manage exercise types. Um, now this is a really important area to understand. This, um, this area here lets you enable or disable different exercise sources or types um, onto your mission. Now a source is where the exercise uh, data has come from for um, each participant. So for example, um, you might not want to allow manual entry as a source so that people can't enter the distance manually. They have to, the distance has to come through um, one of these other sources. Um, you might be doing a challenge where you only want to uh, allow people to, people to post distance to your mission using Strava, um, for example. Um, you can also um, manage exercise types um, here as well. Um, and say, in this example here, you're disabling all of the exercise types apart from cycling. So this would be, you know, in this instance would be if you were having a cycling mission and you only wanted people to be able to post distances to their mission um, using Strava. Um, you need to make sure you save it at the bottom here. Um, I will just say here that uh, manual entry um, is a really good option to allow, um, and that's because sometimes people um, might, might not have their Strava connected, um, or for some reason, maybe at Strava's end, there was um, a reason why their distance didn't come through. It still allows that person to manually enter that distance, and you can just make it a requirement that if they are manually entering a distance, they must also uh, maybe take a screenshot of um, some other tracker or, or their Strava account. Um, but that's uh, yeah, up, up to you to decide um, um, how you want to manage your exercise sources and your exercise um, types. Okay, so back on the admin tab here, um, the next one is invite people to join. So um, you can just, uh, you know, uh, invite people to join here. If you want to uh, add a list of email addresses, you can paste email addresses into there, a uh, subject and then a message. And if you click send, this will email um, those people uh, this message. So. Um, I kind of recommend you don't use this for large, uh, you know, inviting a lot of people, maybe over 50 people, I wouldn't use this. Um, you're better to uh, use the, um, grab this link here, which is just the link to your mission page, and just send that to people who, however you wish, either social media or um, email or some other communication channel that you might use um, to uh, invite people to join the mission. Um, the auto join area here now this is only applicable if you have wallet style billing so not for mission page checkout um, so uh, auto join you need to be very careful as well um, this will this uh, if you enable auto join by clicking that box that means that anyone who applies to join your mission will be automatically accepted onto the mission as a participant so they won't sit in a pending area which would normally be in here um, if there was a, a pending person waiting to join the mission they will just join straight on. Now that can be really useful um, because it saves you having to manually add them, <clears throat> but it also means that um, if your mission is launched and people are joining it, your wallet will be deducted uh, as soon as they join. So you just need to be careful that you're making, make sure that you, uh, you know, the right people are joining your mission. Um, if you want to take a step to prevent just any old person joining the mission, um, you can add a code here um, and uh, therefore anyone now joining the mission um, will be required to into your passcode. It can be anything uh, you want it to be. Um, and if they successfully enter the passcode, um, then they will be automatically joined onto the mission. If they don't enter the passcode or they get it wrong, they will still be, um, they will just come into the pending area and then you can check whether they're supposed to be on the mission um, or not. But just um, be careful with this feature because it is related to your billing. If a person uh, is, is joins onto the mission either uh, automatically or by using this um, passcode, um, then uh, you will be billed for that user as well. 
Um, <clears throat> okay, down here under existing participants, we can see uh, in the individual section, we can see that uh, there is um, there are uh, two individuals on this mission. Um, if we want to create teams, and teams of teams are where you know um, two or more people distances are being combined um, together, then we can do that. Um, you can just give it a team name. Uh, you can uh, you need to add add a picture. I won't add one now, but this will just create another team, and that team will sit in there. Um, and then you can switch people into teams by using um, the drop-down menu. Uh, people will also be able to automatically join into teams um, as well if you uh, if you have teams already set up. So that's the uh, admin tab. Um, if we take a look um, at the platform tab. So the platform tab here uh, allows a whole bunch of different things. Um, you can uh, change the background color um, if you want to, um, you know, um, I'm just going to race, race through this, but if you wanted to change change different colors to suit your branding, uh, you can you can do that. Um, you can also add a Facebook share image. So when someone shares your mission, say on Facebook or Twitter, um, then uh, the instead of it being the default kind of um, image that goes along with that um, with that link, it'll be your own custom image. So you just need to uh, design your file to this side uh, size and then uh, add it here and click save. It's optional. You don't need to do this. Um, the mission completion area. So when a person or a team of people reach the finish line. Um, of your mission, um, they will be asked if they want to mark the mission as complete, uh, which will mean that if they do mark it as complete, it will, the mission will finish for them. So they will no longer be able to participate in the mission. They are done. Um, and uh, at that point, if they choose, uh, yes, they do want to mark the mission as complete, you can uh, then send them an email. So this will trigger an email and you can type whatever you want in here. It'll start with, you know, hi, and then the person's name, congratulations on completing, and then the mission name. And then you can write whatever custom text you wanted to hear. This could be anything from just, you know, a generic congratulations or uh, directing them to the next steps or maybe your next mission. Uh, it could be a message from your sponsors. It could be a f um, send them to a form, a web form for them to fill out some details, say, to rec um, receive a medal or something like that. Um, <clears throat> this area here uh, is for fundraising. This is an optional area again. Um, if you want to add a fundraising cause to your mission, you can uh, you can do that. Um, what you do uh, here is just you paste the link to your fundraising page. So typically this would be, say, a page like Just Giving or First Giving or, or GoFundMe or some other page where it shows um, that you're raising money um, and uh, you can also enter a goal amount um, as well as you do need to manually update um, every so often how much you've raised so far um, so that people can see you know how much you've raised and um, you know uh, what your goal amount is um, you can add some information about the cause so this is really relevant if you're um, if you're fundraising for a particular reason um, if if you're not fundraising you can just um, you can just leave it as uh, as no fundraising down the page here, we looked at the billing and mission entries. I've done videos on each of these, um, so we won't go through in detail here. Um, the pricing, which is in relation to the mission page checkout, is also covered in those emails. Uh, you can also add a what's included um, so that when person's signing up, they can see what's included. That's part of the mission page checkout as well. Uh, and then down here is your launch mission function, which will, um, if you haven't already launched your mission, um, this is the area where you can launch it. And uh, if you're on wallet billing, um, then this will you know, explain to you how much uh, is required to launch your mission based on the number of people who you have joined to the mission. Um, so yeah, hopefully that um, just gives you a, an idea of what the admin and the platform tabs are used for. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. We'll catch you, uh, catch you on the next one.